إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له وما يضل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله تعالى وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار First and foremost, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is truly worthy of all praise. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whilst we praise Him, we acknowledge our deficiency in praising Him as He deserves to be praised. He is as He deserves to be praised, as He has praised Himself. Indeed, all thanks is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who is the source of all blessings. Peace and salutations upon the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent as a mercy to all of the alameen. Dear brothers, before we start the khutbah, I can see in front of me so many gaps. It is the summer vacation. Many of the younger members of our community will attend. And those people who normally wouldn't come will be at the masjid. Let us make room for them. For whoever makes room for his brother in the dunya, Allah will make room for him in the earth. <coughs> Dear brothers in Islam, I want us for one moment to remember the favors of Allah upon us. If I were to say that to you, you would say to me, it is impossible. It is impossible to enumerate the favors of Allah. Yes, we may think of a few, but the favors of Allah are so numerous that it is impossible. It is impossible to put a number to them. Brothers and sisters, if you, Allah, Allah tells us, if you were to try and enumerate the favors of Allah, you would not be able to encompass them. And indeed, mankind is oppressive. Oppressive to himself. And he rejects the favors of Allah. He doesn't give thanks and acknowledge Allah's favors upon him. Imagine just one of those favors, and that is the spare time that we have. Nobody knows the value of spare time until they don't have time. Just like any of the favors of Allah. We don't realize that favor until it is taken away. Imagine now for one moment that our time has come to leave this dunya. And we are lying helpless on our bed. And we are finding that there is no one who can come to our aid. There's no tabib that has the special pill that he will give us so that he may save us from what is upon us. Imagine that. Waqila min Raq. Allah reminds us in that amazing surah named Al Qiyam. When we're asking, is there anybody who can give me cure? If you recall the statement of Sayyidina Abu Bakr when he was on his deathbed, and they said to him, shall we call for you a doctor? So he said, the doctor has been, and he has seen me. And there is no cure for this death. Imagine when death is upon us. One of the things for sure every single person at that moment will be thinking about. 
as how they spent their time. Each one of us will say, if only I had used my time wisely. Why does Allah Taala again and again remind us about time? Wal Fajr, Wal Asr, Wal Shams, Wal Layl. Why does Allah remind us again and again about time? Because time is important. Even the Prophet is reminded. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرَغْتَ When you have, as Ibn Kathir says, when you have finished, فَرَغْتَ مِنْ أَشْغَالِكَ الدُّنْيَوِيَ The matters of the dunya, you have finished dealing with them. Then hurry to the worship of Allah. Hurry to the worship of Allah. Brothers and sisters, when we find Farah, we run away from the worship of Allah. And Allah tells His Messenger that when you have taken care of the ma'az, the other matters, then rift to the worship of Allah. That's the spare time that you find that you should worship Allah. Brothers and sisters, Ibn al Qayyim gives us an example of the dunya and life. Farah, what? He says, that a year is a tree. He gives the likeness of a tree. It's a tree. Its months are the large limbs. Its weeks and days are the small twigs. Its hours are the leaves. And the breath that we draw is the fruit. That's our life. We are finding ourselves again and again that we don't consider how precious time is. Some people say, time is gold. If we really comprehended what time is, we would, is more, we would say it is more precious than gold. It is more precious than the gold that we have. Gold is something which is only has value in this dunya. And even then it is limited life and time, the time that we have is far better. And this is why Allah reminds us as well as Those are the ones who truly benefit as Allah swears by the ages, by time, that indeed man is at a loss. Why is it a loss? He is at a loss because he doesn't use his time wisely. What should he use his time and his efforts with? In Iman, believing in Allah. Doing righteous actions. And then calling to those righteous actions. Advising others to do righteous actions. And then having patience. Brothers and sisters, now we are in the summer vacation. Our children, they have six weeks six weeks, maybe even seven weeks, complete vacation. What are they spending their time with? Allah's Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells the hadith which is narrated in Bukhari the authority of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala an. He says, Na'matani maghoonun fihima kathiru min al nas There are two blessings. Two blessings that the people have. Who has given them those blessings? Allah has given them those blessings. Maghboon. What does that mean? People are wasteful of them. They don't give them the importance. They don't realize how precious they are. So what do they do? They waste them. They are wasteful of those two blessings. And the Prophet said, Kathiru min al nas. Most of the people. Most of the people. And then the Prophet tells us, Asihatu wal farag. Good health. Good health and spare time. Good health and spare time. Two of the blessings of Allah, which Allah puts upon his slave. He has given these blessings to him. And then Allah's Messenger warns, and he is 
not speaking of his own desires. He's not saying that from himself. But anything the Prophet says, which is to do with the religion of Allah, the deen of Allah, is inspired to him by Allah. Allah is telling you upon the tongue of his messenger. That we are wisdom of these two things. Good health and time. Good health and time. And you know, Wallahi, good health. If you go to the hospital and you see the people lying in their beds, mourning and groaning from pain and discomfort, ask them what good health is. They will give you a more accurate picture what good health is. Because unfortunately, we don't realize this blessing until it is taken. We've seen it. We have seen examples of it. How our lives and our priorities change. One minute, we are racing in this dunya at 100 miles per hour. We have little or no time for anything. And then, the news comes. The letter comes through the door. The doctors ring. You have this illness. You have that illness. You have the big C. You know the big C? You have the big C. Cancer. It's terminal. It's stage four, stage three. We've seen it. All of a sudden, then we begin to realize, hold on, have you slowed down? Where have I been? What are my priorities? All of a sudden, everything changes. It takes something as severe as that to slow us down and take stock. Otherwise, we have no time. Because we're busy. We didn't value time, nor do we instill that in our children. Our free time, what did we spend it in? Now our children have lots of free time. Lots of free time. They sleep late. I can see some eyes still, they're red. You can see the rings around them because they slept so late. And so they woke up late. Some of them maybe woke up in the afternoon. They didn't even see the morning. And then what happened? Well, of course, then they had their breakfast and then they put on the television. Turned on their computer. That's what happened. And the whole of the summer vacation, if not all of it, most of it, will go like this. <coughs> you haven't realized, you haven't realized as a parent, the value of time. Don't blame the child who you're responsible for. If you haven't realized the value of time and you're 40, 50, 60, <coughs> what about this young person? What will instill in, in him or her the importance of time? Allah's Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the hadith again, in a written of the authority of Ibn Abbas of the Al-Akumah. He says, اِغْتَنِمْ خَمْسًا قَبْدَ خَمْسِ Benefit from five things before five things come upon you. You have five blessings. These blessings will be replaced with something else. They will be taken away. So before these five things are taken away and they're replaced with something else, not something else which isn't something which is mahbub, take benefit from it. Then the Prophet says, Hayatuka qabla mawtuka. Take benefit from your life before your death. Benefit from these breaths that you draw at the moment. Soon Allah will take them away from you. That is something, la mahala, it has to happen. Brothers and sisters, life, every moment that passes away, we can't retrieve, it's gone. It's gone. Every single moment that passes, is gone. And then after that, it will not return. You know, a time will come, when people will turn to their, return to their Lord and Allah will ask them and they'll say, Rabbi Arjun, la'alli a'amal salli an fi ma ta'ala. Or Allah will turn me back. Now I might do good actions if I return back. But now I've seen 
Now I have seen. Now I have seen with my eyes. So now if you return me back, I will do better. And it's too late. My time is gone. It's not going to return. Our life, maybe we have already spent most of it. But the children that are in our stead and under our care, impress upon them the importance of their time. You know, unfortunately this is the cycle that our parents tell us and we take no stock. But when we become older we tell our children and they are like us. They didn't comprehend what we said to them. When they become older they will tell their children. Is that cycle going to continue? <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, take benefit of our lives before our death. You know, sometimes we don't realize what is possible in just one second of our time. You are sitting doing nothing. If you were to say, Subhanallah, how much have you benefited? How much have you benefited? Reciting the Quran, Alif, Lam, Meem is not a word, but Alif is a letter. Lam is a letter, Meem is a letter, all of them are separately letters. 30 Hasanat. What is possible? You know the charity that we give? People think we have to give thousands of pounds for it to be considered charity. If you give a pound in charity, a pound, what's a pound? Nowadays you see people throw away coins like that and think nothing of them. We are so wasteful. Some people literally throw them away. And some people throw them away on useless things and they don't consider that what I have wasted my money upon, if I were to have spent that fee sabi that, what I would have benefited? Time. Our life before our death. Then the Prophet said, وَصِحَّتُكَ وَصِحَّتُكَ قَبْلَ سَحْمِكَ Your health before your sickness. You know, sickness is often seen as a, as the, the enemy, as the thing which is bad. But sometimes I think, for most people, sickness is good. You might say that is a strange thing to say. Why is sickness good? Because most of us don't remember our Lord. Most of us, we don't remember Allah. But you know, as soon as sickness comes, we remember Him. And then we make tawbah to him. And we worship him. And we call upon him. Sickness is a blessing. For the believer, sickness is a blessing. But when is it a blessing? When we have patience. When we don't complain all the, to all the people how Allah has caused harm to touch us. And we are patient. And we are grateful and thankful to Allah. Yes. The Prophet said, that sickness is purification. A person becomes sick, it is purification of that person. Sickness is a blessing. But unfortunately, we don't take benefit from our health. When we were healthy, when we were able to worship Allah and spend our time more fruitfully for our akhir, we didn't use it. We didn't use our health then. Only when we became sick, we became bedridden, then Sickness is a blessing for most people, but we don't realize it. So we should take benefit from our health before the sickness comes and prevents us from doing good. Farag qabla or farag qabla that your spare time you benefit from it before before Allah Taala makes you busy. You know, subhanAllah, young people, they don't realize the blessing of spare time. So, so much time. You know, students and those university days, most people waste those time. It's when they, they're full of ability and they have so much time. But whenever you ask them, I'm so busy. Pastor, what are you busy with? Oh, I'm studying. And you know, when you see the results, you think, what were you studying? Unfortunately, 
It's most of us, isn't it? And we, we're under the pretext of studying, wasting our time. And when the time came to see the result for the last four years of hard work we were supposed to be doing that we keep telling our parents. We tell our parents, I'm studying. Go and do this such and such. Oh, I'm studying, mum. Can't do it. You have to get somebody else to do it. So the mum has to put a hijab and go out and do it because you're studying. Four years later, flunked. Just about scraped through. That was our study. And before that, you know, college years. All that time that we had on our hands that we didn't benefit from it. And we didn't have anybody to tell us. Or maybe there was somebody telling us. And we didn't like them telling us. Maybe our parents told us and we didn't like it. They keep going on and on and on. Do you know why they're telling you? Because they love you. They're telling you because they care about you. They're telling you because they have been through the same thing. They don't want you to fall into the same pitfalls they fell into. They don't want you to make the same mistakes. They want to see you successful. But we close our ears. Only later to regret had we only paid attention to them. Results are coming. GCSE results will be on us soon. A level results will be on us. Then we regret we only paid a bit more attention. We hadn't missed classes instead of going to classes. Brothers and sisters, our spare time, especially when we are young, I see so many young people, they throw away the most beautiful time of their life. And you know what's sad? They throw it away on rubbish. They throw on something which has no benefit whatsoever. Well, I see those young children, very young children, their parents put in their hands a mobile phone. And I think to myself, you have given him a weapon to kill himself, slaughter himself. Five-year-old, six-year-old, seven-year-old, you give him a mobile phone. You have destroyed him. You have destroyed her. You have destroyed them. They haven't destroyed themselves. You put it in their hand. You know, some people, they don't time it. You know, English people, I think, like that, they may be a little bit better. I remember, you know, going to school and seeing, you know, questionnaires from, from, from school. And they used to say to the Asian children on the questionnaires, how long do you watch TV? And some of the children used to say 10 hours and 8 hours. And the English children used to say 1 hour, 2 hours. They used to control. So when the results came, the English children got A's and B's. The Asian children, they made a beeline for the taxi office. You might be laughing, but this is our generation wasted. It wasn't because we weren't clever enough. Maybe it wasn't even because our parents didn't tell us. We didn't have the value of time. Brothers and sisters, the value of time. I cannot impress, I don't have the words to impress upon you the value of your time. I wish that somehow we had the magic pill that we could give it to our children. That they may realize after taking this pill the value of their time and use it. And I'm not even saying 100%. That's impossible. I'm not saying 90%. I'm not saying even 50%. I'm saying if we use even 30% of our time. And you know, we don't even use that properly. We don't use that properly. But the time will come when this blessing will be taken away. And you know, when, they, when you impress upon people the value of time, when they are young. When they are young, that's when you impress upon the value of time. You know, children come home, they have homework. Do you know that thing? The big H. We leave it to the last minute, the night before we go to school. And we remember, oh, I've got homework, I better do the homework. That's your fault as parents. What we should do is, the day that the children bring their homework, make them do it. Only for them to learn the value of time. If they do it immediately and have it ready, you will see them, and they will be successful. Not only in their studies and in their school, but they will be successful because they will have learned the value of time. Most people blame their bad results on their intelligence. Well, it's my genes, you know, we just not that way inclined. That's rubbish. That's absolute rubbish. 
Allah has put us on a level footing. We nurture in ourselves the qualities that we have. We nurture those. If you don't come home when you're an infant and read your reading book, your reading won't develop. Children will be reading something you only learn to read two years later. Who's fallen behind? You. That reading book that they bring home is a very important thing. You might think of these silly stories. And you have time, five minutes for your children. But you know that? That will impress upon them the importance of reading. Today nobody reads. Our children don't read. Reading is something which now has become redundant. Everybody likes just to watch and listen. So YouTube comes on, and all those other things, and we just watch it and we think we're learning. What have we learned? Unfortunately, most of us don't learn the right things. Brothers and sisters, we have to impress upon our children the importance of time. They have the summer vacation. Set them a target. Yes, we're not saying to anybody that the 24 hours of the day, you should map it all out. Yes, there has to be some time for us. Give them time. Give them something useful to do. You know, even if they did something physical. Nowadays, our children have become social retards. Or they're going to become social retards. Why? Because now the only friend that they have is the screen in front of them. Some people become recluses because that's the only friend they have. They don't associate with any people outside of the time when they have to. Otherwise, their only friend is that screen, the computer screen. So tomorrow they don't know how to speak to people. You know, this is not a joke, but this is reality. Our children will become social retards. If at the age of five and six we had them the mobile phone and said, carry on. They will not achieve even what we achieve. And when we look at what we achieve, we might say, there could have been so much more regret. Brothers and sisters, our young people, this is the next thing. Your youth. Utilizing your youth, your young age, before your old age comes upon. The value of youth is something that we only comprehend when we have lost it. That's the old people. How often we hear them say that if I knew then what I know now, unfortunately, regrettably, this is what we often, all of us say, then I would have used my time more wisely. But unfortunately, that's the state of affairs. Wallahi, there is nothing more painful to see when we see our young people in gangs on the street. What are they up to? You know, some people think, oh, he's got nothing to do with me. Wallahi, this is our future. That young child in the street, Muhammad or Abdullah, whatever his name is, he's our future. He's on the street and he's got idle thumbs. He's got nothing else to do. And now he's in a gang with others who, else, who, are, who also have nothing to do. So what will they do? They will get into trouble. And they will fight. And they will mix with the wrong company. Maybe they will get involved with girls, with drugs. And you know what we say to ourselves? Not our children. Our children won't go that way. So wallahi, nowadays this plague, this cancer of drugs, there's few people who have been saved from it. Few people are saved from it. Our young children are walking up and down the streets, they have nothing to do. Where are the parents that they should direct them? Yes, those that come to the masjid, the Imam will give them irshad and try and guide them. That's his responsibility and he should do that. And alas, alas, the Imams, when it comes to the young people, there is no link. There is no connection. We have nothing for our children. I congratulate the brothers who are trying to fill the lives of our young people with something. Try to engage them in something. Whether it is a sport, as long as it's mubah and doesn't have haram in it, it is better to do that than to wander up and down the street. Our children have no time because they're too busy with their friends. We don't have time for them, so they have time for their friends. Their friends are going to be guiding them. 
And you know how the first, the first problem starts? But we never ask them, where are you going? Who are you going with? When will you be back? In fact, what do we do? It's an open door. Go and come when you like. He's out of our head. And then you give them money on top. It's a combination which potentially could be disastrous. You know, people want lots of money so they can give their money, their children money. This is not a good this is not a good thing to hope for. Because unfortunately, when people have time and they have money, often this combination results in some bad results, very bad results. Brothers and sisters, our young people, our young people, they have responsibility. Every one of us is responsible for his flock. Allah will ask us concerning our flock. And of course, we can have قبل فقر and your wealth before you become poor. We've seen that as well, haven't we? When we had lots of wealth, we didn't spend it in Allah's path, then Allah took it all away. Then we say, well, Allah, if only you would give me wealth, I would spend it in your path. Our time in this dunya doesn't go unnoticed. Everything is being Recorded and watched. Everything. There isn't a thing that we do. There isn't a thing that we do except that Allah Taala is privy to that and His angels are privy to that and they are writing a record of you, brothers and sisters. What does Allah Taala say? Inna kharafan sanam. Allah Taala says, Man to us was to be next. Even the, the whispering of the heart. Allah is aware of that. Never mind the movements, never mind the statements, never mind the actions. Allah is well aware of all of those things. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you concerning that hadith which Allah ta'ala said upon the tongue of the Prophet which should impress upon us the importance of this thing. لا تزول قدما عبد يوم القيامة حتى يسأل one comes. The Prophet said that the foot of the son of Adam will not, or the, the feet of the son of Adam will not move. They will not move until he's asked about five things. You know this hadith, just the beginning of this hadith, that the feet of the son of Adam will not move. And you will not move, you will not be allowed to move. You will be made to answer these questions. What will you be asked about? Your life. You will be asked about your life. <coughs> what you spent your life in. Each one of us will stand before Allah and Allah will ask him. The blessing of life. I gave you life. And you lived your age. What did you spend it in? And Allah Taala will ask you about your youth. And what you exhausted that in. And Allah Taala will ask you about your wealth, how you earned it, how you earned it is the first thing, <coughs> where you spent it, the second thing, and the third thing. Well, Allah Taala will say concerning this, what you what you did with the knowledge that you had. All of these things Allah will ask you before you die. Now maybe at this age we have now come to realize something about how precious these things are. But our children don't know. They need you to impress that upon them. The summer vacation has just started. Put together something which is fun and something which is educational and something which is beneficial for their art. Put something together. You know we always say the mustard doesn't do it. And that person doesn't do it and everybody else is to blame. But we, we have a responsibility. Why do we do something with our children? Which will be fun for them. But at the same time, it, they will learn something from it and it will be better for their akhirah. Something that they enjoy doing. You know, nowadays, reading Quran has become a punishment. We tell our children, if you don't behave, then I have to switch the television off and you have to read Quran. 
So straight away the psychology is that Quran is the punishment. That's the punishment. If I don't behave, I have to read Quran. So from the beginning we are giving them this tilbiya. However, now we have the opportunity, we have time, the summer vacation has begun. Let us, from the beginning, from the offset, lay some good rules. Limit the damage at least, if we can't salvage it completely, and make them do something beneficial. TS1, TS Valley is doing many things for the young children. They can benefit from that. The masjid, that's part of the masjid. They are always doing something fun. The children should participate in that. If nothing else, at least they will participate with good people from the masjid. They will see some good activities and participate in them. At least they will benefit something. But there are so many things that we should do with our children that we don't do. You know, even if it's reading something which is fun with them. Read with them one of the stories of the prophets. And you know what? It's very easy to read the stories and to take lessons from those stories. There are many books available. The problem is we don't read. If we could take one of those books and impress upon our children, read the story with them. Even if it's ten minutes but they learn something from it, that ten minutes, that will be preparing fertile ground for what is to come in the future. Brothers and sisters, our responsibility to our children is not only that we give them the nicest clothes, whatever they ask for, it has to have a certain label or a certain badge. It's not because they, that we are responsible to give them the best food we could possibly find for them, so they, you know, there's nothing healthy, it has to all be from McDonald's or somewhere like that. That's not our responsibility. Our responsibility before that is to make them successful in worshipping Allah. That's their goal. That's our goal. We will have to be asked about that. If we didn't give them the best made in clothes, Allah will be asked about that. Allah will not ask you about that. If you didn't buy them a car, Allah will not ask you about that. What Allah will ask you about is that that person was responsible for you. Do you teach them what they needed to do and know so that they could worship you? That's what Allah will ask you about. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us a people when we hear the people break as we true. Give us the ability to ask one. Also make us a people when we hear the false break as we false. Give us the ability to avoid your work. All the matters now. Bismillah alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu wa rasulillah ma ba'du usifu nafsi bi taqwa Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi al-sidi wa al-alim wa sallu wa sallam wa al-bashid al-nadheed. فإن الله سبحانه وتعالى قد أمركم بذلك في كتابه فقال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما وقال صلى الله عليه وسلم من صلى عليه مرة واحدة صلى الله عليه بها أشرف الله من صلى على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إن أحمد مجيد الله مبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إن أحمد مجيد وارض الله ما أبرت أن أربعة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن سائر أصحاب نبيك أجمعين وأن أهل بيت الطيبين الطاهرين وارض الله عنا ما أمر بمنك وكرمك وجودك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الشرك والمشركين ودمر عداء الدين وحمي حوصة الإسلام يا رب العالمين اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم الأموات عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى ويرهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذبكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله العلي العظيم نذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ونذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون